we're we should be uh, we should be live. Yeah, we are. Uh, show show your hat. Don't show it on yourself. Just uh, oh show, gosh. Show, show show everybody your hat. I bought a hat. Look at that. Let me see. If, oh. oh, that's good enough. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, drop back shot. It's kind of a. It's kind of now. Now it's. I think. I think. I think you're supposed to wear it like this, more like a fishing hat. Yeah, but it, the brim's pretty stiff, so I wear it with the brim flipped up. Uh -huh. It's a Stetson. Um, it, I will. I will be honest. It has some quality issues, so it's going back. But I, but they're taking care of that supposedly. They haven't done it yet, but they're going to take care of it, and so I'm good. And I, I think, uh, I think it's know. a cool looking hat. I think it's uh, less uh, oh uh, that that Philby or whatever they call it. Uh, the one I, right. I wear all the time. Yeah, it's just Trilby. a little more uh, Trilby. Yeah, yeah. I like that one a little better. That's a little more of a. I'm a guy that's ready to go fishing or do anything kind of hat. Well, that's what's, it's more. That's it's more. It's more like it's it's more halfway from the trilby to a cap than yeah. it is uh, uh, what I'm wearing. Well, what I'm wearing is a trilby. Right. Well, I, I have uh, I have a, a like a a, a boonie hat, like a like an army surplus boonie hat. Yeah. And uh -huh. I'm not and I'm not really a hat guy, but. Man, when it's raining I and mean, when you wear glasses, hats are kind of handy. Yeah. And we went yeah. on we went on vacation to Florida, and it was sunny. The hat was really handy, and so oh, yeah. I wear this boonie hat. But the boonie hat, my problem with the boonie hat is it's very casual looking, mm -hmm. you know. And 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 I mean, we usually a lot of times when I wear it, someone will ask me. Uh, you know, where did you serve or something like that? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. Army surplus, don't... army surplus. You know, you don't get it. I'm not stealing. I'm not stealing valor. Like stolen valor. No, I'm yeah, not. No stolen that. valor here. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, but I, I like that hat. I still like that hat. Sometimes yeah, a hat is but... a hat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I wanted something that was a little more, little more dressed up, but yet casual. Mm -hmm. Not a baseball cap, but something. And to me, that reminds me of the hat, like in the fifties, like the old man would have went out to war to rake the leaves or something, mm -hmm. or maybe on vacation or something. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> cool. Anyway, so yeah. I got it. It was. It, it was. It's a Stetson. It was. It wasn't a cheap hat it was you know almost 50 bucks you know yeah but yeah 50 bucks it's, i got uh, it now, about exactly 30 dollars more than i spent for my <laughs> little semi i don't know if they're synthetic straw or or actually straw but well those, i have trilbies of mine are uh 17 18 bucks something so like i have yeah. So let me let me grab since since we're talking about hats, I'll grab some of the hat because I have multiple hats here in my studio um, that I've bought over the years. Um, let's see, where's that other one? I've okay, got a so lot of caps. Come to think of it, I've got a graveyard of uh, caps myself. Yeah. So I've ha I have I've had this forever. It's just kind of a cheap bucket hat. I don't know where I got it, and you can see it's 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 wrinkled beyond repair. It's like um, Rodney Dangerfield would say, "Looks good on you." Yeah, what's funny is the stitching's <laughs> nicer on this one than it was on the expensive one. Yeah, you know. But then I got this. I don't know if you can see this. Let me let me do this. Did you? So did, I got this. Did you get my reference? Okay. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a nice. Oh, that's from uh, Caddy. This Shack. is. This is. Let me see. Let me see if this one fits. Okay, so this one fits. Now the problem is. I can't wear this hat to work. Oh, it's coming unraveled. Uh, because one of my employees wears a hat very similar to this, and he's decorated, put all this stuff on it. And so if I wear it, it looks like I'm 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 imitating him, you know. Showing uh, him how, how he ought to wear this a is, hat. Uh, his is light straw. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe telling him how yeah. it really is. But this yeah. is more to me, this feels a little dressier than my other hat. So then I bought, so then I have, I've had this for a while. I've had this hat. 
this is kind of a I don't know where I got this. It's it's okay. it's, it's, it's very flip floppy. Uh -huh. This seems to be fairly well made. I think it's a little tight. This this one's a little tight on me, which may be okay. It looks like it'd be very, very, hat. very comfortable in heat. You know, I mean, it's straw and all that. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I have this hat. I don't know oh, where yeah. I got this. This oh, is kind of more of a. It's a dressy hat. Yeah, this very dressy. This is a dressy dressy hat, and this is a little big too. It kind of rattles around on my head. And then my boonie hat is like downstairs, but it's a it's boonie and it's camouflage and it's the the I, I picked that specific one because the camouflage is called it's it's digital it's called midnight digital which I think is so cool and it reminds me of something like a like a something from like a Escape from New York or something you uh -huh. know it's it seems kind of futuristic to me I guess is what I'm saying mm -hmm. anyway. I was, so I, was just, hat. I was just thinking about that's my hat collection. Well, yeah, I was thinking about Escape from New York because Tubi uh, TV's got it on. I could I could watch that if I feel like it with a couple of commercials. I'm I'm, I'm about the mood. I I watched rewatched the thing about uh, two nights ago. That that can always be rewatched. That's a group groovy movie. Of course, oh, I, yeah, I need I, to watch that. I just recently have you never seen the thing? Oh no no no! I need to rewatch that. Oh yeah, I've got it oh, on. Yeah. I've got it on. Uh, I don't know if I got it on Blu-ray or DVD. I've got it. I saw that when it came out, and of course the, and I was just crazy about it. And the later knowledge that that thing bombed. It's like, what do you want, America? That oh, was this a damn good movie. Yeah. Whereas my my well, they don't know what they want. My instincts about tremors was instantly uh, w was right. I was like, wow, that is a perfect little movie. And uh, America agreed with me. So they were in the mood for a crazy little monster romp. At that time, I guess maybe the amount of humor in it might make a big difference. Yeah, well, you know, Halloween's coming up, so. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you know, yeah. it just seems like is Halloween really in the air properly uh, these days? I assume it's still going to get kicked in the crotch uh, from the. By COVID. By COVID uh, again? I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see. I, I'm not. I wouldn't be looking forward to it as a guy that's kind of like uh, <laughs> saying, "Stay away, get off my lawn," kind of kind of guy. You know, I don't want to see a swarm of people coming up to my front porch. So, right. Well, be, we'll uh, do something. We'll do something at my church on Sunday night. Halloween is Monday, and uh, and uh, we'll and then Monday we'll just kind of camp out here to ha kind of hang out and not mm -hmm. turn on any lights or anything and just lay low. Um, I'm going to Arkansas this week. Hey, Arkansas! What part? Yep. Uh, Northwest. Northwest. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm a little... Bella, Vi Bella Vista, Rogers. Okay, yeah. My father-in-law is may, may be having a stint put in, so oh, so we're going up to... Be around, going up huh? for Going up to be around for that, just in case, you know. Um, yeah. Anyway... Anyway, gonna go to Gardner's Books in Tulsa on the way up. I think because it was my I had two unreasonable requests that I would I would go if we would go to Gardner's Books, and if uh, we would go to the casino at Shiloh Springs and eat because they have a big buffet that's pretty darn good. Well, yeah, you may get your lunch paid for with a little uh, one arm bandit action. Yeah, probably probably won't. I'm not much of a gambler. Even for a little uh, I, slot, slots, the slots? Nah, not too much. Even though I did find a dollar on the ground the other day, and somebody I was with said, when you go to Silo Springs, you got to put that in the slots. <laughs> yep. I don't know. I probably won't, though. Well, that's good. That's good self-control. The only way I ever used to gamble, yeah. it would, you know, I would go to these uh, shows with the... Um, Leland Corporation to try to sell our our video games. 
Oh, yeah. And uh, I would always... Probably a lot of more in Vegas. Oh, yeah. And I would uh, do this strategy for gambling. I would just go uh, a, a big a big uh, two two sequence bet cycle. I would go black and red on a roulette, and if I and I would bet big, you know, it'd be like a, people willing to lose a hundred bucks. I'd lose I'd lose it all at once if I lost, but I would go oh, twice. Yeah. I'd go twice, and if my luck held. Hell, that that turned into uh, quite a, quite a you know quite a bit of money. <laughs> so rather than rather than build it up or whatever, you're like put it all on yeah. once. Yeah, red put and it black. All once and then, then put it put it on again. So double it and double it again. And if that works, you're out. You're done with your gambling. Mm -hmm. I think and, that last and, part and I, you're and done had, is where everybody yeah, fails. People, people can't do it. Even even guys that are staggering big intellects like norm mcdonald can't uh can't control that impulse if, if you really are a gambling addict uh like he said it's it, the point of it is when it's in midair that's what you're living for you aren't really addicted <laughs> to w winning or losing you're addicted to that halfway point when uh it's not clear whether you are going to win or lose that's what you're into yeah. Even even though you, I tell you, old Norm McDonald, I guess he lost. Uh, he must have lost millions. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he just apparently was as compulsive as a, of a, a thing as you could possibly manufacture as an example of compulsive gambling. It just was really bad. Oh yeah. Hey, I got a freelance gig. What, uh, how is the, yeah, tell me about that. And then I want to know about updates on your, uh, other collaboration with the uh, source point writer. Okay. So the collaboration is, okay. So I'm working on this drawing. I, you guys have seen see this. It. I've been working oh, yeah. on this for several weeks. You know, it's, I'm trucking right along. I'm about. It looks nice. I don't want to say it. I'm not want to say I'm near done because I want the when I'm done. I mean, when I'm done with the inks, I want this to be like spectacular. And then when I put the the wash on it or the the dyes on it, I want to really pop. Mm -hmm. So I got a ways to I got a ways to go. I I, I acknowledge that. Uh, one of my friends that I went to high school with saw it and was like, "Hey, how much would you charge me to do a drawing of my car?" Oh, you and, can and he that. wants it. Well, and he wants it like in front of a downtown landmark, and he wants it eight by ten. So I said, you know, I said, okay, here's what I'll do. I'll I'll do I'll 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 draw your car. I'll do a pencil drawing and that you approve. I'll send you a pencil rough, and when you approve the rough, I'll I'll do the I'll, you know I'll send you a black and white ink drawing, and um. It'll take me, I can start it in two weeks. I got stuff going on this week and next week and I'll, uh, and I'll do it for $175. And, mm -hmm. uh, do you tell so, him how many, uh, how many hours so he, it, I, it, it'd probably take you four hours to do that. Well, that's, that's a pretty good price. Yeah. I, I told him, I told him I'd take me two to three weeks. Wow. Okay. And, and he, he was like, that sounds good. I'm in. So. Anyway, so we'll see how long it takes. I'm not. I am not drawing it in front of a building like this with these trees. But he kind of wants yeah. it in front of like a downtown, something downtown that's kind of recognizable. He suggested the Civic Center, but he's like, I'll leave it up to you. In fact, I'm, gonna, I'm if, unless it rains tomorrow, I'm gonna go downtown and kind of scout out a location. Get some, yeah, get some reference. Go from there. I remember when get we were downtown. Get some reference photos and uh, go from there. We went downtown for yeah. reference one time. We uh, were looking for parking garages that were just right. Yeah. I don't remember yeah. what that ended up in. It's funny you say that. That was for a comic book, and yeah. it, they had a store in a parking garage. And the parking garage I took pictures of was that Prairie Surf Media parking garage. Now it was the Myriad, Myriad uh, Convention Center or whatever. Ah. 
Yeah. Or Cost Convention Center. Now it's Prairie Surf, and you cannot go. The tunnel is locked at that point, so you cannot go. We could not get those reference pictures today easily. Okay. It would it would take a little more work. Don't have that access. Huh? Of course. Nope. They have. They have. They have. The city. I don't know if they gave them that building or funded them or what, but they've kept people out of there. We know that one time we went in there, we were able to go inside the building because that one door was unlocked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we just uh, you know, kind of blundered our way through all that. Yeah, kind of wandered in there. Yeah, no, dude, we didn't see anything interesting, but hey, rattle that door, see if that opens. Yeah, well, does that door open? What is that? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that is um. Anyway, so I'm um, if it doesn't rain, it's supposed to rain until about ten tomorrow, but um, I'm probably gonna go downtown for a little bit and take some photos and see what i can see on that deal um anyway that's the that's the well what's funny is one of the guys at my work who does freelance work and dude he always when i when he talks about freelance work i'll ask him how much he got paid and he's always lowballing it mm -hmm. and he and so then he goes i was telling him about this and and he go and i told him exactly what i just told you what i was drawing he said, oh, yeah, he said, a guy I went to school with hired me to draw his Corvette. I go, oh, that's cool. How much you get paid? Oh, he paid me $250. And I'm going, dude, that'd be your biggest payday. You know, I felt like he had kind of inflated his price a little bit, not to lose face, you know, which that's fine, whatever, you know. Well, that's about what a nice slick piece of commercial art ought to cost a guy. You know. Yeah, I mean, I'm. Uh, it, mine is only going to be eight by ten, so I'm not going to do it near this. I mean, it's going to be, you know. Yeah, it's going to be doable in a certain amount, a, a lot quicker. You work small, right. this, you get things done quicker. The yeah, si this is this is this is not, a piece of not, art. You're not Simon Bisley working a yard across. You know. That's, no. My next comic project, in fact, is going to be smaller, I think. You aren't going to work 11 by 17? No, I think I'm going to work like, I don't I don't know what size, but I think I am going to work smaller. Yeah, it's it's it does kind of cramp your style to have to move across the page as much as 11 by 17 requires of you. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, or, or it does me. It does. I'm gonna me. try it. You know. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try it and see how it goes. Anyway, so you asked about the my other project, which is the pulp character that me and Greg have talked about. We, mm -hmm. I am supposed to call him on the phone on Tuesday, and we're gonna talk about it. The spider. I've the spider. I've done some roughs. Some some character sketches. I probably need to do some more. That's what Sherm Cohen said about anything you're going to do if you're going to want to be a storyboard artist. It's like you immerse yourself so much into whipping out on model your own little character design. Not not necessarily your character design, but the company's character design. That right, but nothing, the, nothing the, to the you. character, you know, yeah. You'll always be able to drop down and do that character from that point forward because you've got it. It's in it's in you genetically. By the time. Yeah. It Muscle is, memory. Yeah. That's that's where you want it. Make it. Uh, yeah, I can see that. It's like I'm sure. John Byrne, oh my God, can you imagine the things that he's got ingrained now in terms of like all that stuff oh, yeah. that he used to do? Like, yeah. It was yeah, funny. Yeah, currently he doesn't draw at all anymore. Wow, that's wild. Yeah, uh, crazy to think. I was listening to Alex Ross talk today, and you wouldn't think that he was really trying to adhere too much to Kirby looking at his stuff but he really is he's got it right. on, he's got it on his mind to uh to do what kirby you know the, it was his you know i mean kirby it came out of his head how those guys look 
and he, he was talking about uh, Reed Richards and oh, how, yeah. how uh, Reed Richards really started out for him in terms of like what he might be using for reference at any one time or other, uh, started out as the professor, uh, Russell Johnson on uh, Gilligan. Uh, was uh, really kind of what he was thinking of. And uh, who, you know, oh, yeah. he's got, he's got, yeah. he's got, he does have those really fine, regular features. He probably should have, he probably should have had a lot more opportunity than he had, really. Uh, oh, yeah. He, he seemed like a really solid, good actor. Uh, yeah. Oh, the, he showed uh, up. Have he, you, go ahead. Go ahead. Have, you, have you read that Alex Ross book, uh, Full Circle, the Fantastic Four book? Ah, uh, I don't think I have. Uh, uh, I know I showed it to you on the show. The library has it. You need to order it. I think you'd like okay. it. Okay, I will. The library's it's, got it. it I'm doesn't, there. It's, 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 yeah, I think I saw it at the downtown library, maybe. I saw it at one of them, I thought. Anyway. Am I even on camera? I'm not even on camera, am I? Uh, yeah, well, your your head isn't. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Oh, that's, good. that's good. That bugs you. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, I said no. that we, we'd get more. Uh, I was asking if my hand was on. Oh. No, I, I haven't been looking up. I've been doing, of, uh, I've been doing a lot of semi-inking. I have no oh. idea if we've got an audience. We don't have an audience. Yeah, I, I talking to Kirby. I just did a whole bunch of cosmic crackle. Now I go over this with a whole bunch of uh, wash. Now with a, uh, I'll do an acrylic wash. I'll turn all that cosmic crackle kind of bluish, and I'll uh, go white toward the center. You know, obviously, and then uh, the Hulk here will be bluish toward the edges and everything like that. So it's going to be a lot of fun by the time it gets to be in an oil painting. Well, that's cool. I might as well uh, do a little bit of pencil drawing. You've been now drawing that. a lot of Hulk lately. Yeah, the Hulk. I, I always dug his proportions the way Kirby did him. He was just basically a big square yeah. of, uh, of muscle. And it really is. Yeah. I find him very challenging to draw that way. It's like, okay, where have I got a where have I got room to fit what I know about anatomy <laughs> into this this proportion? I mean, that's pretty tough. Oh, my strategy. <laughs> this is funny. I'm on YouTube, supposedly uh, having an ambition toward having a larger audience, you know, and everything. And I yeah. and, and my biggest uh, gripe, of course, is with YouTube and what what you have to go through with their ads. And <laughs> it's like, well, you must not have the spirit of the thing then. Cause that's what, yeah. YouTube's, all, that's what YouTube's all about. And so I, yeah, I mean, you want to make money, but yeah. you don't want to watch the ads. Yeah. I've been, I've been downloading stuff versus uh, going, going through what they do to you on ads. I've just been uh, down, downloading and watching stuff. I'd usually watch. I go to the home I get all the suggestions. I say, yeah, that looks good. That looks good. You know, you know, I'll click 30 things and then download them and then watch them all ad free. And I also discovered another hack on Tumblr. You can, uh, yeah. you can watch. I, I noticed other places when you watch stuff embedded ads don't come up. So on your Tumblr, you yeah. can do your, you can do your own embedding and have a whole bunch of them in the queue, and you can uh, just sit there and watch stuff <laughs> without having nice. the ads come up. Yeah, so that's 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 my number one hack if you just want to not download and mess around with that process. That does that does take a little wait a while kind of patience to do that. But the uh, oh yeah, but but if you I just click out, around. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> Ads, I guess I just, you know, some some people, you know, some people can't listen to people eat, and <laughs> it's got a certain name. Yeah, and I'm one of those guys that just can't stand ads. He, he feels I feel like I'm being 
abused having to listen to ads. <laughs> Give me the free stuff, no yeah. ads. Yeah. I don't know. To me, and I know this people would think this is weird, but to me, I think YouTube being free is pretty cool. I know it's not free because you're watching ads, but oh no, the, no, the amount of the amount of free content is just ridiculous. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's it is a crazy. I mean, you can you can find content for anything you want to fix, just about. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I, I learned learned so much from. YouTube or rather uh, been guided by so many tutorials and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah is, I mean, it is good. Stuff that would stuff that would, would cost you a fortune to find, or if you could even find that information, I had to replace the battery in my car one time and I realized my passenger window wouldn't roll up or down. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what in the world? And apparently there's some kind of weird Subaru thing that if you replace the battery, you got to do through this little conniption of doing one power window and then the other. So that the windows go down or something. It was the weirdest yeah. thing. Huh. You know, it's one of those kind of deals where like if, if you did it, you know, 15 years ago, you'd be screwed. Cause you'd be like, why won't my, you, and you'd have to take it to the dealership and have them, had, you know, and they go, Oh, we got to reinstall this switch and it cost you 50 bucks. Been Joe over a barrel. You know. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, just a matter of little, little, some sort of little handshake thing. Did you fix it yourself? Did you get it done? Yep. Oh yeah. Excellent. Yep. I mean, I've seen tons of stuff out of fix stuff on YouTube. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah, well, yeah, like I say, well, this guy, uh, Miracola, that I've been watching is like, I feel like he's given me more guidance than, and, uh, and all this stuff on uh, comic book art. You know, when uh, a guy like, uh, oh, what's that guy that inks so well that uh, does Oh my, I was just watching one today where he was talking about line weight. What is his name? Uh, oh it's not Richard Friend, is it? It's not Friend. It's uh, the other guy that uh, does such great high detailed. I'll look him up. I'll look up my history here real quick. There you go. Look him up. I'm interested. Oh, you, you, you'll, you'll be bugged that I couldn't. Remember his name is what will happen to you when I probably when I find him. Yeah. Let me get my history up. There's Paul Joseph Watson saying it's all bullshit. <laughs> oh yeah. That's that's kind of, that's kind of his theme, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so too. But he's right. That's that's why he's got an audience. He's oh right. yeah. I guess we like to be told what we all already know. You're right. It's he, all you know, bullshit. He, he used to be part of Alice's Jones's crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I wonder how you can how can, how can you what kind of legal system what kind of judge allows oh, gosh. A, a verdict of two and a half trillion dollars? Yeah, um, it's like. Do you not know math? Do you yeah, not know do common not sense? Do not understand that they can't pay that. He couldn't no, pay that no. if he had 2,000 lifetimes. If he had that, he could pay you to, your trillions. What you need it to is, know by David, David Finch. David hmm. Finch. You've never heard oh, of David yeah. Finch? Oh, I've met David Finch. Oh, I mean, cool. when I say met him, I mean... Me and David Nelson and C.B. Svilsky and David Finch all hung out at a bar after Dallas, Wizard World Dallas. Huh, Wizard World. I'll tell you a funny David Finch story. So so we're at the bar, and we're hanging out with C.B. It's me and Dave and C.B., and we're kind of hanging out. And David Finch comes in. He comes over, and he's talking to us, and, and we talked to him for a little bit. In fact, he was getting ready to get married to that Meredith girl that's on his on his channel. It's his wife. And anyway, we were talking about marriage and that sort of thing. 
this girl comes up and she has a pad of Bristol board and she goes, Hey, I'm going around to all the artists all the, and asking them if they would draw something for me on my Bristol board pad. And, mm-hmm. and he's like, Oh yeah, I'll draw something for you. And, and so she left and he goes, you know, I hate this because they're just coming around and, you know, you know, I'm not on duty. I'm off duty, da, 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 you know, and just trying to get free art. And he, he, he kind of complained about it for a little bit. So he drew, he drew a super detailed penis <laughs> on a piece of 11 by 14 Bristol board, huge and, and disease look, I mean, think about his style with all. Oh the, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's really good know, at veins. Just, yeah. You know, veiny and, and pustulant looking and, you know, <laughs> Well, he, he, seems, and, he seems like he wants to uh, reach out to the world with his uh, YouTube channel in terms of like being yeah. a being a guy that is just there for you. Well, I'm sure. going ta- to take my sweater off here. I'll be incommunicado. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm back. Better? Are you better? Yeah, instantly uh, got a little cooler. Oh yeah, I don't I don't wear sweaters that much because I don't like a shirt that I can't that doesn't have like ventilation down the front. Yeah, you, yeah. you know you yeah. get you get me in that, and I'm and I mean I wear it occasionally, and I do like it. I do have a couple of rugby shirts I like, but even then they've got a little bit of ventilation down the front. But man, you get me in a full blown sweater, and I'm like, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. You're too too. Uh, I'm, oh yeah, I'm like Houdini trying to escape, man. Yeah. Anyway, I I've learned uh, these. Uh, I I see these guys, and I didn't really completely approve. It'd be kind of like uh, being on the Italian beach and seeing guys in speedos. It's like yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure I approve of these compression compression, <laughs> compression <laughs> leggings. But, uh, now I'm wearing them underneath my uh, shorts. Oh and yeah, I, for to keep warm. And I and I dig them because what they do is they aren't keeping you warm because I can wear them because before I get out of the house, I'm wearing them around and I'm not heating up. So I, I was thinking to myself, well, rip off. I'm not these things should already have me warm if they're gonna keep me from the cold. But all they are is really a kind of a super efficient windbreaker. All you are oh, feeling, yeah. all you really are feeling, are allowed to feel in them, is this your own skin's temperature. It, it nothing gets through with anything that has just got you gloved in like that, and but oh, it, yeah. it, it allows your own excess heat to pass through it, which is a uh, kind of neat. I mean, it's a uh, kind of a little. Uh, uh, it's it's not it's basically not a wetsuit strategy. In other words, it's not it's not right. You aren't warming up the water next to your skin. It's uh with your own temperature. But I was surprised. I re- I really dig them. It's uh I'm gonna <laughs> I may end up wearing shorts all winter long. I don't know. We'll find out what I can stand. Yeah, and when it gets cold out. Yeah. <laughs> It gets cold. Yeah, it gets cold and windy. I'm not looking forward to how high the winds tend to want to get around here. Seems oh, like they were terrible the other day. Hey, you know, uh, I returned my wicked, wicked ways. Uh, Errol Flynn's uh, oh, story. Yeah. I got a, a hundred, a hundred yeah. pages deep. And I found a PDF online in some archive place. So I said, oh, well, doggone it, I need to start on my other book. So I'll re- now that I've got a PDF to finish it off with, I'll return that. But then I watched a Christopher Lee do- uh, documentary last night where he's, it's called The Tasmanian Devil, The uh, you know Life and Times of Errol Flynn. And boy, that's a pretty oh, really? special. Where'd you watch that at? Where did I get that? that? I got it where'd off. I got it, I, 
I got it off YouTube. I had to. I'll uh, send you a link if I can find it. I'm, I, but again, I did it as a download, so now I'm I'm cut loose from my uh, my linkages. But I can I can find it. Obviously, all I have to do is type in Tasmania, Tasmanian <laughs> Devil and uh, Errol Flynn. Yeah, I would I, I would mind Tasmanian Devil. Wouldn't mind saying that. But uh, yeah, apparently Lee had a personal stories that uh, <laughs> with Flynn, he was apparently in four movies, but he must have not been a very big actor at that point. Yeah, yeah, I got it right here. The Fast and Furious Life of Errol Flynn. Yep. They even have a TV movie I downloaded called My Wicked Wicked Ways. I didn't know they'd made a movie of it. But anyway, uh, the... Uh, oh, yeah. Is it a 70s movie? That's not yeah. familiar. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's not. It doesn't look very good. And anybody, anybody that tried to take that on of being cast as okay. some, somebody that was like Errol Flynn, and everybody's going to say, that guy, he may be... Somebody else, but he's not Errol Flynn. You know that, that that's a, what you'd be up against instantly. Yeah. No. Yeah. He's he was, and I think I think at least me. I'm too young to fully appreciate him, and you know he's a little before my time, yeah. and not quite iconic enough to, you know, make like a James Dean impact. Yeah. Oh no, uh, no. He, uh, you they, know, they, they put him in, you know, pretty dumb stuff. So, you know, making him into a pirate, putting him in cowboy movies. You know, they never let him do anything there. He wasn't something you probably couldn't write over the weekend. You know, they were all pretty dumb stuff. Yeah. Uh, have you ever have you ever seen Robin Hood? His version. Oh yeah. Okay. I've watched. They used to run an occasion on the OETA Movie Club on Saturday nights. To me, that's his most iconic thing. Is uh, that Robin Hood? Yeah. But as, I would uh, agree with that. But as uh, Lee says, you know, chronicling this thing, uh, uh, Flynn was kind of like in with an in crowd early on because of who he was running with, his girlfriend, or maybe even she was his wife at that point, was a well-known French actress. So he's already uh, got a quick way to get through the gate and get introduced around, yeah. and pe people can instantly see, hey, this guy's got a lot of charisma. And apparently Jack yeah. Warner was so impressed with that charisma right off the bat, he put him as the lead in uh, Captain Blood. That doesn't happen to anybody. You don't become the lead in a Hollywood movie as your first. Uh, yeah, your first thing movie. I, your first thing. Yeah, and uh, he had that. His very first thing was uh, a couple of kind of obscure things that were shot in Australia. But shoot, we don't we don't get Australian films to this day on a regular basis. They have a hard time. They have a no, outside of, outside of Mad Max, no. Yeah. yeah. They have a lot of hard time putting stuff over from, uh, even though they, they, you know, they've got some good filmmakers. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So I quit reading that and now I'm into my CIA book and, but I will get back to reading all that. I tell you what, the guy, uh, huh, he literally, was a slave trader. He uh, he made really. He uh, they they called it. Uh, oh, what do they call it? Recruitment. I think that's what they called it. But basically, he would. Uh, it was kind of like being Shanghai. He'd get these people talking. Oh my to, gosh! He'd get uh, these uh, ignorant uh, natives, and you know they've got every excuse for being ignorant. They've never. They have no idea what's going to happen to them. And he'd uh, get them to come along on a little trip with him. And all of a sudden they'd be uh, slaves. Uh, but they might have. Oh, my gosh. 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, for all the uh, coconut uh, stuff they did, I forget what else they have. They have a big crop up down there. But, yeah, they had a lot of need for slave labor. And he was he was making oh my money. So, you mean, um, you know, there's no bigger foul that you can yeah. have as a, as, a, as a human being. But he uh, even does that better by making a real point of how, how enthusiastic he was about children he had several nymphettes you know he got his he got a, a big time in trouble in real life for uh consorting with uh, 15 years old and it was a big trial and all that now that the doc documentary claims that it was just because they weren't uh up to date on their payoff money to corrupt la cops but at the same time if he was doing it maybe he should have been Right, break, yeah, break, break over the coals, but but no, no, his early life is like it sounds like he makes mention of 12 as being the uh what the natives consider adult, and so I, w I don't think he would mention 12 as uh as a age unless that's exactly the age of the girl he was talking about being uh so uh shacked up with for a while. You know, he talk. He it sounds so good idyllic. Grief. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of good grief stuff in his early life where he's telling the story on yeah. himself. You know, and he's he's like going That's what out. It's called jungle. my wicked, wicked ways. Yep. I mean, he goes out in the jungle and uh, shoots birds of paradise for their feathers for hats yep. back in the states, and so that's anti. Uh, Anti, uh, you know, ecology or anti-animal, anti-bird, anti-bird, certainly. Yeah, yeah. anti-bird, anti-bird, bastard. <laughs> but I tell you what, he paid a price. He uh, had, uh, you know, anybody that gets malaria has it for life. You don't. It's all. It's, there's always a chance it can uh, crop back up again. Oh really? Didn't know oh, that. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's always ready to give you hell again. And, and, which is weird because it's not a virus. I know you can always see viruses not being able to be uh, ever give way to anything. You know, you've, you've got a virus. If you've got a virus for life, you've got some sort of record of it in your system. Uh, but uh, basically, you know, malaria is bugs. You know, I mean, you're getting yeah. you're getting something from a got a parasite, isn't it? Yeah, it's a paras parasitic thing. You'd think they'd figure a way to flush that completely out of your system. I'm going to look at that up real quick. Is there a cure for malaria? Cure for malaria. Uh, you know what? No, they're still what? working on it. They, they're still working on it because uh, when anything says we have treatments, that yep, means that's that means no they, cure, no and, negative on the cure, man. Yep, yep. So yeah, that's modern science for you. <laughs> I was watching something today where uh, oh yeah, I was so. Uh, another name russell brand he's oh, showing, yeah. he showing a clip over and over of uh, joe biden shaking a fist screaming from his uh lectern we beat pharma you know you know it's like what what, what? what? You, were, you were hand in glove with pharma what are you talking about yeah, what is he talking about we beat pharma he's and, and uh, so you know Russell Brand had quite a bit to say about that. <laughs> oh, I bet he did. Yeah. But he had a lot of fun with it since he had such a nice clip of Joe Biden making a fool of himself again. Talk about you. Did you uh, see many clips of uh, old Fetterman? Uh, I, I saw enough to know. He I can't have. imagine how somebody would vote for him. Jeez. Yeah. He should have never agreed to that. What a, well, he should you, know, you know, people people would just vote for their team, basically. 
you know. The, oh, the, yeah. Well, and here's the and thing. The, and, I, the, and that's what really you know, annoys you me. You see him, and he's like yeah. in his hoodie and his cargo shorts. And yeah. and I think himself is like a. Oh, what would you say, Ellis? Sorry. Oh, wow. You've got a big delay for uh, what you hear from me. Uh, I was just going to say that what bugs me is that he is, uh, now I've forgotten what I was going to say. Go ahead. What were you going to say? <laughs> Have you forgotten well, what you I were going to say? No, no, no. I think, I think he's got this image where he's out there and he's got his shaved head and his goatee and he's like, you know, and he's a big guy, I think, mm -hmm. compared oh, yeah, to all he's very big. big guy, at least. Very big. You know, and and he's kind of got this, uh, he's got this persona of, well, I'm just a tough guy. He's probably a bully all the, I mean, I don't know this, and I'm not mm -hmm. voting or not voting for him because of this, but you just kind of get the impression he's a guy that he's, of course, he's going to debate Oz because he's got to maintain that image of I'm a tough guy and I, you know, I mean, he just seems like a guy that just is used to just kind of pushing people around and getting his way. Mm -hmm. That's my impression of him. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they've, they've got quite a few, you know, nat natural bullies among the among the Democrats. Yeah. But oh, you know, oh absolutely. If, if it's like if you're well, a lawyer, they're, they're the lawyer class, and if you're a lawyer is a bully and uh, won't back down from anybody. That's that's the lawyer you want. Whereas if you're Daryl Book, Brooks yep. and you're, you're your lawyer, have you, did you watch any of that crazy guy that ran over everybody doing any of the, his uh, lawyering? Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, that's the Daryl Brooks. I knew that name was familiar. Uh, yeah. Yes. What an idiot. The, yeah, he was, I think he, he, I think he did it so that he... Yeah, we're well, gonna pill. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's obvious yeah, that he, guy should not have been his own lawyer. Yeah, that that probably is an angle for the appeal. He can do it all over again. But you know, if he appeals and says, "I need a real lawyer for my case," because obviously things went wrong for the reasons <laughs> that I was told they would go wrong. Uh, you know. But he was sentenced. I don't think was, that should be grounds for an appeal. It he was, shouldn't be. It he was warned. Be. Yeah. Saying us. Not for an he, appeal, you know. You but then again, he does. He, he does yeah. You have a fool for a client, lawyer, sir. You know, yeah, good, yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, but, uh, I saw his, uh, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't stop listening to it. I didn't watch it. I, I didn't watch. I didn't watch every little tick of his eyebrow up or down or anything like that. But I did listen to it. Yeah. His his closing statement went on for just almost an hour, and I swear to God, he didn't. It, it was never anything you'd want to say to the jury. That's who he was addressing. It was just a lot of yeah. It was it was just him wanting to kill as much time as he could in this in this process. He just wanted to be on the stage for that time, and uh, <laughs> uh, the biggest uh, influence on it seemed to be Miller's Crossing. He, I can't tell you how many times he said what. Look, <laughs> He said uh, so many times, uh, "Look, look in your heart," which is, of course, uh, that big, big line when uh, that guy's asking for mercy and Miller's crossing. Look in your heart, and that, that's, what, that's what he was doing. He was telling the jury, "Look in their heart." You'd you'd know that. Oh, and he brought up being a fa father several times, and you know, and. It was, uh, it was, uh, I was basically watching it for, I, I, I felt like uh, that I was enjoying his pain, I guess. I probably was just purely enjoying his pain that he had no power. His powerlessness was what attracted me. You know, he's, he's having to sit there. You know, he's a guy that deserves some pain. I mean, that's oh, a, yeah. 
and and to say you know that, oh it's not a hate crime is so ridiculous but yeah. don't get me started on that yeah. <laughs> it's obviously it's a hate crime you yeah. know but yeah. you know that's not the world that our world does not believe in that sort of thing so yeah there's a very small fraction of daryl brooks in the world thank god i mean the guy decided to go yeah. on oh, another, yeah. another little bullying thing immediately after it says I want to walk up to one of these suburban characters' houses and get them to make me a sandwich. And by golly, he did what? it. What? He, 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 uh, immediately after he, uh, rampaged, I believe that's where they I caught him. That. Yeah, he went to a house. Like at somebody's house? Just walked up and rang the doorbell and, uh, just, I forget what he laid on him as a wrap, but the, uh, he, Guy, guy made him a sandwich. He told him he'd been through something. Can I have a sandwich? Yeah, yeah. I need a sandwich. I just had a car wreck. I just, yeah. I just had a car wreck, and I need. I, I think it was like, just exactly yeah. like that. Yeah, it was uh, him playing the victim in the whole scenario. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's the problem. Is but, certain but that, people but, crazy? Yeah, crazy people in our society believe they're the victim, mm -hmm. and. And I mean, I don't know this guy, but or his history, but in most cases, they're anything but the victim. They're oh, usually no, the no, victimizer. No. Oh yeah, they're predators. They are. Uh, they are born to pick you up by the neck and shake you and laugh at the result. Yep. Yep. But like, but like I say, that's why I was compelled to watch it. It's like. Ah, you got no power, do you? This is all you can do. Is yep. Use the power of your limited self to present yourself now. The power of your insanity. Yeah. Which in some quarters would be enough. I mean. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what he should have gone with. But, I, you know, for him to hand that over to another person while... You know, he could do the opposite and be on stage and it just be him. And he's not a bad, uh, what do you call him? Lawyer? Jail jailhouse lawyer. I mean, in terms of like, he he had memorized several main points he knew he wanted to hammer. Oh, yeah. I saw I saw in the end he kept objecting and he, he, would ha he had a lot of legalese down. That's for yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I mean is he did have some... Uh, jailhouse legal ease which some of those guys get really you know that's all they've got as far as time and what they research they uh they get pretty boned up on what society owes them even from behind bars yeah why not i mean oh they, yeah, they got yeah. All what the, else? like you say what that's else a good time doing? man yeah why not do something that may save your life or save somebody's life? Improve your life anyway. Richard Speck, yeah. all those guys, all those, all those mass murderers, all the, they all get good at uh, having a pretty good life in terms of like with its limitations. No freedom, of course. Yeah. Yeah. No freedom. Yeah, you know, but but they you know generally find stuff to do. But uh, I am inking uh, windows, Ellis. Let's have a look. How, oh, look at that. How many do you think you got to go there? Is that going to be the only ones that have to be blacked in? I noticed. Uh, that um, I'm going to do. Yeah. I noticed that. I mean, you, here's uh, my reference. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could. So that. that is these windows. Mm -hmm. These are going to go black. These are partially going to. I'm a, all this dark, I'm going to do an in ink along here. I don't know where I stop. I think I stop about here. But I want to do all this in ink. And then I'll go in and do the blue and blue and, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you noticed what? Oh, I noticed as you were drawing how very rarely you slap a, a straight edge down while you're inking. But you feel confident enough to go from point to point with a nice... Uh, sure line which is cool i think that's well, I, 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 I used to do that too most of these windows i used a ruler 
Oh, really? Okay. Well, no, I'm talking about your inky. Your inky. Yeah, but I. Oh, yeah. Uh, your, 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 use... your, your pencils. Yeah, sure, you'd use your straight edge. Oh, maybe it's just my imagination. Maybe you were yeah. slapping a ruler down more often than I thought you were. Well, I did. I, I did all. All the. All the windows were done with a ruler, inking okay. and pencils. Okay. But you know, but, but I'll tell you this: I didn't do any perspective grid. Of course, I'm looking for a, at a picture, but yeah, I didn't do any perspe perspective grid. I don't think. Maybe I did. Anyway, so I'm also I'm also a lot of brush from now on. I'm also listening to a really good uh, Tim Ferriss interview with Neil Gaiman. With no with no uh, oh. <laughs> no advertising because <laughs> I downloaded it, but uh, that's a that's a really good interview. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. Oh, dude, we're past time. Are we past time? 55 minutes, according to my thing. But uh, of, course, of course, it's past 8 o'clock. Yeah. We started a little late. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, we did. Oh, look. Wim, Wim showed up and made a couple of comments when we were talking about Brooks, and I didn't notice him here. He blamed God and has no oh. conscience. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That wasn't him sure. bullying people. They just helped him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he uh, he uh, laid a story on him, and they he said, "Well, gosh, can I make you a sandwich?" Yeah, that's right. Uh -oh. Okay, Scott, we're saying bye to Wim, and we'll oh, say bye. Thanks, bye Wim, to for showing up. Okay, uh, Scott, ending okay. broadcast. You got anything to say? You done? Uh, nope. Thank okay. thank you very much. Uh, Heaven's Rejects Two's out in stores. Go pick it up. Excellent. Excellent.